Graham. This time we're in a lovely little village called Allendale, which was on the North Pennines, right at the very top. So we're going to do what's called the Isaac Tea Trail, well, part of it. Right, we're probably going to do it in about four sections. So yeah, it's been raining all morning, but the sun's out. And uh, hopefully it'll be a nice day. Rookie mistake though, I forgot my gaiters. So it might get wet. But that's alright. So I'm just gonna head down the hill from the town. And this is where it officially starts at the market square. And uh join the trail. I think we get some good views. So let's go. Okay, a little bit about this tea trail. It's called Isaac's Tea Trail. And it takes you on a wonderful walk across the North Pennines, across the moors, and by the rivers. It borders Northumberland, Durham, and Cumbria, and it's about 36 miles long. Follows in the footsteps of a guy called Isaac Holden, who was a tree seller from the Victorian times. So he used to walk between the villages and farms and all the rest of it, selling his tea. And uh, a while back, I did the Alston Hull Whistle walk, the old disused railway. If you haven't watched that. Have a look through my videos, that was a good one. And whilst I was walking there, I seen the sign for the tea trail. And I thought, I wonder what that is. So uh we were out last weekend around Alston, just having a ratch, having a look around, and uh I found me a little book available in all good bookshops. <laughs> and uh so yes, I trapped myself. Four pound ninety five well spent, hopefully. And uh, I thought I'm going to do that. Now I have still got the water finish, which is about the last seven mile. But uh, I would like to do that for my fiance. So we were going to do that today. She's had to go to work. So I thought let's start the tea trail. So I'm planning on doing this probably over four sections, four weekends. And uh, We'll see how we get on. So, set off from Allendale and we're going to head down south to a place called Nenthead, or towards there anyway. Um, it seems to be sort of split between two 12 mile walks and two shorter walks, so I might do sort of four nines. We'll see. But uh, so far, so good, so be. And we'll uh, little blue sky. It was forecast to rain this morning, it has rained. It's very wet and there are a few midges out. But it's dry now, it looks like it's going to get out nice. So, I have done this path before, but part of it. Because you know when you sort of visit somewhere, and you sort of think to yourself, I remember, I remember parking up at Allendale, and walking down past that mill I just took a photo of, and walking up here. But I, I haven't done the tea trail. So it must be a, another circular path I've once done out of another book. You tend to find that once you've been out walking quite a bit, you revisit sections of paths that you've done before. You know, you come across them, you might cross over or go through the same towns just on a different route. So yeah, so we're going to get ourselves out. Four or five hours worth of walking. And uh, just enjoy it really, like we always do. Get some video, get some photos. See if we can find anything interesting for you guys. So keep watching. I gotta say, not bad for a Sunday morning stroll. A beautiful day. Hopefully, it'll stay like this. He's enjoying himself, and yeah, as always. 
thought they sent us something. Rubby rabbit. Right, well I don't like it and continue on. Look at that. It's caught me eye there. Can you make it out on the camera? That's kind of cool, isn't it? I read in the book it's uh, there's a stonemason called Stephen Holiday. Supposedly done it. There you go. So yeah, we're just continuing the walk. There's a little horse training field there. Got some four jumping. Seems to be we've got the place to ourselves. Got him on a lead. As uh, every now and again you seem to come across a flock of sheep. So he's quite happy. So just keep him on. There's a few styles where it's a bit tricky with a dog if you're doing this walk, but uh, luckily he's just small so I can just easily pick him up and carry him. But uh, just be mindful if you've got something the size of a Labrador or whatever. It might be a bit awkward. Look at this one. It could make a lovely little camping spot, wouldn't it? If you owned this field or you had his permission. Oh, that's a he. It's their permission. It might be a lady. Yeah. Very nice. I'm just trying to get out. Look, that blue sky's on its way. I was just singing before. I think it was this time last year when I started the Great Glen Way. Love that. So yeah, middle of September. Just trying to avoid the midges. That was my plan. Of course, nice to be cold though. But uh, we did it. The plan was to do the Hadrian's Wall this year, so. I've got one stretch left to do, so that's going well. Who knows what next year I'll bring you. Let's see. I don't know if you can see this peeking in the bushes there. It's just caught my eye. I think this is the ventilation shaft. A room of one, possibly. Do you think? You see it? Studden Dean shaft, according to the map, and it's about 25 meters deep. Because around here, the North Pennines, there was a lot of mines back in the day. So uh, this place is littered with them. Chimneys and mines. Oh look. As it do our upper. Yeah. Bag of nails and a tube of silicon. Who knows what you could achieve? It's starting to get warm now. There's no wind, it's uh, not even a breeze. It's like sort of sticky heat. Clammy, clammy, that's the word. All the berries are coming out, look. Ready for autumn. Well, it is autumn, isn't it? I think this is probably my favourite time of the year for walking, to be honest. Autumn. You know, when the leaves start to fall on the ground and the season's changing. Because the summer, obviously, it gets hot. I'm not really wrong for the, the hot days. Where's it out? And with being blonde and bald, I did burn. <laughs> I wasn't made for the sunlight. Well, for sunshine. It's like a bit of a cool idea. And it all seems to be a little bit quiet as well. In the boats of summer. Uh, I know it's a lot muddy underfoot. But uh, that's alright. Just put a good sensible pair of boots on. Talking of which. The good old berg house on the way out now. The grips starting to wear down. I had a look on uh, a couple of sites on Facebook, a couple of groups looking at getting them resold, but I think you're looking at probably about 70 or 80 pounds to get them resold. You know, and I think I only got the boots for 90 from the berg house outlet shop at Gretna. So I don't know, I don't know what to do. 
because they are very comfortable boots now and you know get them resold fantastic boots but uh on the same hand you think well for another 10 pounds you can have a brand new pair of boots so i'll see you might uh might visit a couple of cobblers more local see what they say and uh i'll get myself to gretna and see if they've got diesel on it's a cracking little shop in gretna mind gretna great way workout shop you can get some very good deals in there mind you've got to be you know it's one of them things where you can go one day and haven't really got much in then you go back a couple weeks later and it's like a new stock arrived i suppose it's like every other outlet stores like that isn't it anyhow i digress i guess just continuing on the walk we're loving this aren't we son Get out and enjoy yourselves. That's what it's all about. Hey, I've just got it somewhere else worth mentioning. This is Studden Bridge, built in 1899. Oh, they're calling the book. They're calling it, it was 1900. Let's not argue over a year, eh? And uh, that's who built it, look. It was built so they could uh, have a nice circular path back to Allendale. And just up that track there, there's a place called Studden Farm. And it was uh, very popular back in the day, back then. People from Allendale would do this walk. And they would pop there for a wonderful refreshment. Consister, consistent, sorry. Of a mixture of lemonade and cream. That was a little farm speciality, and people would walk all the way from Allendale for that little treat to have some. So there you are. So I suppose it'd probably be like a uh, cream soda, maybe. Who knows? But anyway, a bit of another bit of information on what the next one. There you go, there's the North Pennines in its glory. And that's back towards Allendale where we left this morning. And we're just over an hour and a half in, and about four miles. So, in there. We're heading towards that building now. And uh, that building there with the red sort of arched doors, it was built back in 1861 and it was actually a chapel called Pry Hill Wesleyan Chapel. Um, back then there was a boom town in chapel construction, believe it or not, and it's now a barn. There you go, that's been the stand there. Oh, 250 yeah 260 yeah not bad eh someone used the right cement <laughs> oh see I'm home now I'm pleased to say though now we're sort of getting up a bit of elevation there's a bit of a breeze so I haven't got the midges anymore that's a blessing it's just taking the edge off that sun as well Obviously it's mid-September, so it's not that hot. Just uh, perfect weather conditions, really. Look at that, though. I think we'll go over the moors to some extent on this walk. So I'm going to try for 12 miles a day. See how far I get. Now the only thing is when you do this walk, it is one big circular walk, but uh, it's made up of sort of four, four smaller walks. Basically, that's it. Was thirty-six miles, so what, four nine thirty-six, nine-mile walks. But there's a couple of twelves, a six or something. But obviously, it just be mindful. I part the Cornell and deal, so the good lady's gonna have to come pick us up, and take us back to Allendale. That's one good thing about when you do 
a daily circular walk. You can uh, finish where you started where the car is. But hey, you are. I can easily get over that. Yeah, look at that. That was a shuttle. Right. I'm not trying to get over these styles. So that's how he gets over this one. Probably shows up because it's on camera. Right, this way. Come on. This way. Yeah. Go on then. Go on. Go on. Go on. Hey. Good boy. Good at that. Let's come this feet behind this tree. This is called Rowan Tree Stop Bastille. I'm looking at if I can get in. That's a gate there, isn't it? Stay off for a second. Always make sure highway code when you walk through a gate, make sure you'll close it behind you. You know, just respect the highway code. So here we go. Permissive access. So a Rowan Tree Stop was built in the early 17th century, near the end of the period when border raids were commonplace. Alright. Yeah. Alright. Now, when they were working to preserve the ruin, they discovered a bread oven. Bread oven, sorry. This way, mister. Come on. So I'll quickly the road. See if we know where the bread oven is. If that's it, maybe. I don't know. Look at the cool the little pot. Uh, which is cauldron. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, so when the farms or whatever were getting attacked, they were running for the here. Now we can see, see the holes there? I'm guessing that might have been where the four joists were. Because if you look there, that looks like a chimney, doesn't it? And a fireplace. Which will make sense because the floor would be that height. Because back then people were smaller, you see. Five foot three or something like that. So the ceilings weren't that high. And plus the fact of things like heat, you know, the, little, the rooms were small, keep more heat in. Yeah, bugger. Nettles. That looks like another fireplace going up there, look. Yeah. That's a different, you see that? Different bricks. Oh, it's been rebuilt. That might be a window or a door, maybe. There, look, there's one of the joists on the wall there. Ah, there's it. You make it out on the camera. There. I'll turn my joist. Yeah, there's some more. So, yeah, that would have been the floor with the chimneys above. And that's the view out the window. Wow. And the frame up there, look. Good stuff. Uh, deep of history of this country, isn't it? That lovely little sandstone arch. Very good. Right. Yeah, so it's at the, on the path of the tree trail. You can't miss it, to be honest. I like it when you find little things like that. Little gems. Right. So that's almost four and a half mile from Allendale if you want to come and visit that. So slowly head up on the moor now I think. Looking at the way the path's going. And looking at what I can see on the horizon. Bring you back shortly. 
Right, that's where we've come from over there. And we'll just come up onto a bit of road. And we're going to join what's called the Black Way, which goes up there. Up that more. A little bit of elevation. And then we'll, I believe, we'll go across the moors. Sorry, I'm trying to look at my map and hold a selfie stick whilst I talk to you. Yeah, across the moors towards Nent Head. Oh, lovely day. 4.85 mile. So, we'll see how far we get. Anything over sort of 8 to 9 is a quarter of the way around, so you know, we might just split it in a four even path. So, it all depends on where the sort of path meets the road and where I can get picked up, you know. Plan that into it as well. We'll keep going for now. It's just about well, quarter past twelve, I think. Well, see if I can find somewhere just to stop, get some water, and have a snack. And we should go. Just, uh, I won't mind doing this in the winter when it's snowing. You know, January, February time. But it's very picturesque then. in a different sort of season. I'll just turn around, sorry, right, turn right, yeah. And start half up. Catch us in a bit. Just continue across the moor over there where them trees are. That's on Allen Heads. Can't see us for that hill. It's over there somewhere. And that hill there is what's called Kill Hope Low. And did you know it's the highest hill in Durham? There you go. Just continuing on over the moors towards Cold Cloth, and then from there you head towards Nent Head. So I'm not sure how far we'll get. We'll definitely get a Cold Cloth though. And we're what 7.25 miles in, just nearly three and a half hours. Oh. It's so desolate, isn't it? That's where they've been burning the heather, look. So what they do is, the gamekeepers, or the state managers, do control burns of heather. It's like squares or strips, and that promotes new growth. And the little grouse birds, the game birds, eat the young growth of the new heather, you see? So that then promotes the game birds and then they can do a shoot once a year which brings a lot of revenue into the local economy and creates a lot of jobs so that's why they do it anyway land management and we're just continuing sort of southwest I haven't seen our soul all day it's like being on an alien planet when you're up here. You know, just bare, barren, no one around. Not that I've ever been on an alien planet, like, but you know what I mean. Right, guys, we've got a place called Coal, Coal Clough, I think it is. Coal Clue. Cold cloth.
Uh, so yeah, that's where we meet the road basically. So we're just gonna get picked up from here because the weather's just starting to turn a bit, there's a bit of mist coming in. And we have done 9.5 mile. So yeah, good day. Enjoyed that. Now I'll tell you a little bit about Coal Club. So bear with us because I'm gonna be off a book. Sadly that remains of Coal Club over the highest village in England. Sorry, once the highest village in England, with a population of over 200 people, boasting a pub, a rectory, a London library, and some vegetable gardens. The village was from the mid 1700s at the forefront of innovation in the mining world. Uh, yeah, it actually had um, one of the deepest mines in England, which was 100 fathoms, about 180 meters, with a subterranean wagonway that was a mile in then. There you are, so that's where we're going to finish the walk today. And then next time, head towards Austin. So thanks for watching, it's been a lovely walk. Um, the best part was before the moor. Once we got on the moor, it was just a bit sort of bleak and blank. But up until the meal, it was really nice. So yeah, so we'll see what the next part brings. And uh, thanks for watching. Till the next time, stay safe.